Have you ever tried to act like a superhero and your mother questioned you, who do you think you are? Yeah. Mom, have you ever tried to act like a brave, amazing, and a smart woman? And someone walked up and said, who do you think you are? Dear distinguished speakers and dear guests, this intimidating question, who do you think you are, was the reason behind my failures. Yet, recently, the reason behind my success. Let me tell you. When I was four years old, I was cute, I was talkative, and I was active, and I liked to try new things. Of course, I wasn't good a companion to my mom. That one thing she asked me to do, or actually not to do, don't touch anything. Forgetting that golden rule, one morning, I went to the kitchen to find my mother preparing food. She was using a meat grinder. You know that meat grinder? That machine makes meat into small pieces. So I stood there. I looked at the meat grinder and looked at mommy. Looked again at the meat grinder and looked at mommy. I said, mommy. She said, yes. I said, can I try this? Sorry, honey, you have to speak up so I can hear you. <clears throat> okay, mommy, can I use this? My mommy's first turned white. She left whatever she was doing. She walked toward me and moved me out of the kitchen. Uh-oh. A while later, my mommy went to the toilet. Yes, it's the right chance to try that machine. I ran to the kitchen, and there, ouch, ouch, ouch. My mommy ran to the kitchen to find my small head inside that machine. She started shouting angrily, who do you think you are? To which I couldn't reply that I just wanted to do like her. Not only the consequences were losing the fingers on my right hand, but the message was deeper. That to try new things, you got to be at a certain age. Apparently, four wasn't that age. In 2013, I was sitting behind my laptop working on some videos of demonstrations from different Syrian cities. When I heard someone knocking at the door, it seems that we have visitors. Okay, after a while, daddy said goodbye to the visitor and ran to my room. His face was really red. Angrily, he said, Mesa, what are you doing? I'm working. I know that you are working. What are you working on? Some videos. You have to answer me frankly. Are you involved in the revolution? I tried to tell him that I just tried to help the displaced and to speak up for the oppressed. But he never let me finish my statement. And he said, who do you think you are? You can't stand against this criminal regime. I said, um, let's think of it like media work. Are you serious? Being a human rights defender in Syria is not, a, it's not media work. You are in real danger. You have to leave the country immediately. And I left. Four years later, I was sitting in a large hall just like this one. I was just in the second row. I was with my friends and colleagues. We were attending an international symposium where our boss was supposed to deliver a speech. 
Of course, we were there to support our boss and to clap for him. All of a sudden, my boss got a phone call, so he left the hall to answer the call. But he spent long time outside. One of the organizers approached us and told us in his broken English, your turn is next. Okay. One of my colleagues left the hall to tell the boss, but he never came back. He just sent us a message that the boss cannot deliver the speech now. My friend sitting next to me lowered her face and bitterly said, we came all that distance to fail here. I did the same. I lowered my face and I said calmly, no, we are not going to fail here. She opened her eyes, turned her face toward me, and she asked me, what do you mean? I said, it's okay, don't worry, I can do it. Surprisingly, she said, are you serious? I said, of course. I prepared the speech for the boss so I can present it. She was so astonished. So I said, anyway, we don't have more options. The moderator was just announcing that it's our turn to go up the stage when I left my astonished friend and got up to the podium. I stood there. I was looking around me fearfully. The audiences were large in number. The hall was large with lights. I stood there thinking, who do you think you are? Then I took the mic a little closer, looked toward the audiences without being able actually to see their faces and started saying, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be here today and to give you, to talk to you about the results of our recent researches and studies. When I realized the faces of the audiences, I realized a standing ovation. I didn't expect that. I was really happy and excited. I smiled, waved at the audiences, and walked away. To there stood my astonished friend. She looked me in the eye and said, I never knew. I looked her in the eye and said, my friend, this is who I think I am. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what do you do when your own people, your community people, who are supposed to believe in you and to see something in you, but they don't see that thing. What do you do when you are 50 years old who lost their investment? Don't stop. What do you do if you are 60 years old mother who raised her amazing children, yet you feel that the world should be a different place? Don't ever stop. What do you do if you are 24 years old, but the educational system bothers you? Don't stop, because you are a unique fingerprint, a special DNA that doesn't deserve to take its greatness to the grave. And next time, when someone says, hey, 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 who do you think you are? Just look them in the eye, put a smile, confidently, yet humbly say, someone better than yesterday, but someone you haven't met yet. Who do you think you are?